Good afternoon and welcome to today's episode. My name is Monica Moding and I'm delighted, super excited to be having somebody from the creative industry. The purpose of this program, Women at the Front Lines, is to ensure we bring to you and showcase women and also uh, inspire others to spread out in various sectors. We'd like to bring to you women in all sectors, in politics, in business, in commerce, in agriculture, in public service, in science. And of course, today, the one I have is from the creative industry here in Uganda, but she is working across the region and the world generally. So welcome with me, uh, Madame Rebecca, mm -hmm. Miss Rebecca, actually. Well, I think Miss is better, yes. it's much more appropriate. Miss Rebecca Akoele, who is uh, uh, someone who is going to really uh, uh, start us up with this creative industry that we want to uh, join and, you know, interest ourselves in and see what women are doing in that industry. Mm. Becky, you're welcome. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that brief introduction. Yeah. I am so delighted to be here. My name is Rebecca Akoyel, uh, reigning Miss Top Model International Third Runner Up. And I hail from Tesla region in a district called Amuria. <laughs> wow. Yes, Amuria, Amuria, Amuria is gifted by nature. And uh, <laughs> that is in the far east in, in Uganda. Yes. And I'm interested in capturing your life, your journey, and also why uh, you're doing the works that you are doing. And of course, to inspire any other young woman out there who may be, you know, thinking through her life and saying, I would like to do something in fashion, something in the creative yes. industry, and doesn't know how to, to get started. So mm. we we'll just have a conversation around that. But we'd like just to capture this young woman, where she's coming from, parenthood, growing up, early childhood. How is it like? How, how was it like for you, you know, coming to this point where we are now? Mm. Yeah. Well, as a child, mm. fashion has been... My dream, mm. being a beauty queen was also my dream. Mm. I remember way back when I was a child, my mother used to do some bit of tailoring. Whoa. So I'll sit next to her and see her doing stuff. Mm. And I also try to imitate her. But then again, I was also a child then and my dad used to buy newspapers at home. And in the newspapers, I read about this kid that got to Rainbow International, Ooh. you know? But and the then, things they would do in that, yes. yeah. Then I'll see these kids showcasing weekend wear, they're telling, they talk about catwalk. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing them modeling, I'm like, ah, ah. I also want to do that, you know. <laughs> so slowly by slowly, the interest kept growing. It kept growing until when I reached primary school and I started modeling now. I started participating in MDD at school and yeah, I really love to be a model. And I even remember telling my friends, one day I'll be Miss Ugan. Wow. <laughs> I'll tell them I'll be Miss Uganda one day, but uh, mm -hmm. when I was, I just said it as a child. Mm -hmm. I never knew that this is the direction I'll you be taking. You were taking, yeah, yeah. So I grew up doing that. Even <laughs> while in high school, I, since I had this passion of tailoring, I remember very well, I used to be in class during prep time. My friends are reading, even in preps. Me, I'm busy sewing caveras in preps. Ooh. Yes, that was how crazy this passion was. And then when they're teaching physics, I'm sketching dresses. And I remember my teacher telling me, Rebecca, stand up. So I stood up. He was like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I said, I am doing nothing. But I was sketching <laughs> things in the book. He said, give me your book. And mm. he said I was doing sketching. Mm -hmm. So I really had no interest in science. Mm -hmm. But it was, I had so much passion for fashion. But then again, my high school life was all, was all about modeling. Right from the cook to the toilet cleaner, knew me as model. Wow. If you came to my school asking for Rebecca Akoyel, nobody knows oh, that know name. That. Okay. So it was model that was my name. Wow. Even the HM, the headmaster, called me by that model. So that was so, my so name. So did your parents notice that interest from the beginning and did they try to push you in that direction? Because usually parents battle with the, you know, identifying children's interests and mm. uh, positioning them in that direction of life. And sometimes actually pushing children to do things that they don't, you know, have that spark for. And therefore, you know, disorganizing their calling in life. Mm. How, how, how was it for you growing uh, up? For mm. me, mm. actually, my dad was not in support of me being a model. Mm -hmm. It's always it like, like that. Yes, yeah. it was like, that is, that is spoiling you. I mean, you're going to be like these other girls that have no vision. Mm. Mm. You know how parents are. Not everybody is going to support in someone until they understand the whole thing. Yeah. While my mom was supportive, 
Ah, my mom told me, Rebecca, if you want to be Miss Uganda, like you say, please Go make ahead. sure I don't get scars. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Which scars? Scars. Oh, on the body. That means yes. I had to take care of myself. Absolutely. Yes. Because the beauty, you must keep the beauty. You must be beautiful. Yeah. You know, she knew at least that concept. Yes. And then my mom used to be supportive even in fashion. Mm. She knew I like to do this. So one time I would make my clothes, those outfits in Kavera. I'll make uh, trousers, skirts. But I didn't even know the basics. Mm. So what I'll do, I'll get a finished trouser, put it on that cover, and then cut following the sketch. Wow. That is how the interest kept coming. Wow. So whenever I'll do that and sew with my hand, my mom will get those outfits I've made and hang them in the living room. Mm. And when her friends come, she'll be like, see what Rebecca has made. <laughs> <laughs> so she really gave she me that. She saw that interest. She saw the yeah. interest in me. Yeah. And she bought me hand needles, threads. I would go with them to school. Wow. Because she knew I had that passion. But of course, she would tell me, do not only concentrate here. You mm. have to also read hard. A little, yeah. So my father was trying to say, no, 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 Rebecca, you should concentrate. Mm. Reach mm. university, mm. then mm. make your own decisions. Mm. Mm. But mm. some talents don't have to wait. They don't wait. You yes. have to just train your child mm. to balance the two. And, uh, you know, talents really are planted in each one of us. And we can know it from the beginning when we are growing up. Mm. But you see, the setting where we grow up, mm. Parents seem to think that, you know, being in academia is where everyone will make it big exactly. in life. And so this entire creative industry in Uganda has been ignored <laughs> so, so much. And yet many people could make a living and earn and bring more money mm. to the country in terms of, you know, yes. incomes. Yes. Yeah. So your parents, your mother identified that she much identified earlier. It. Yeah. And so, she was really supportive. Yeah. So did you finish school? Did you finish university or you, uh, you actually came out midway? Unfortunately... Mm. My mom passed on when I was 14 years. Oh, so I was in senior three. Mm. So I, 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 was up, I, I had to withdraw from boarding from the school I was in mm. and taken in by a caretaker, mm -hmm. but wasn't even financially well. Mm -hmm. But this managed to push me to senior four. Mm. Mm. Then from mm. senior four, he asked me to make a decision or a choice. Either I should go to five and six and find my own self at university, mm. or I should go for a course so that I'm able to support myself through Going university. Going forward, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So what I decided to do, since I had this passion, it was burning and I loved it, I decided to go to YMCA. Here in Kampala. So from YMCA, yes. that is where everything started now, seriously building up. Wow. Building up like on a serious note. Uh -huh. <laughs> on a large scale. <laughs> large scale now. Yes. Now at YMCA, but the whole journey was really a tough one because mm. you know, when you mm. lose your mom, mm. Then you lose your dad also, mm -hmm. and the coming week, mm. losing two people oh, at and the same, same time, mom. everything capsized. Mm. Everything came, came falling, absolutely. came falling. Absolutely, absolutely. And now this is me doing fashion, a very expensive course. Mm -hmm. that you, you know, you have to buy materials, buy that, buy this, but the tuition alone is expensive. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why today, what I want to do, I want to give somebody who cannot afford because I know what it feels like what it means. being chased out of class because you don't have a material, mm, mm, having mm, paid tuition. Mm, mm. But uh, before we reach here, okay, I before, want to go before we get there, mm. I'd like just to capture your life, how you started. Yes, the interest was there. You showed mm. it from the beginning. Ah. But at what point did you really get on that catwalk and, uh, you know, how many, you know, uh, contests have you been oh, through? The yeah. contest, mm. there are about six or five, mm. if I must say. Yeah. The very first one, I was 16, that mm. was Miss Looks. Mm -hmm. It was a teenage competition. It was the first one I, I took part in. And I just joined it, like they were announcing that it, it was running, that but was running. And then I got to know it like today and the event is tomorrow. Wow. So me, I just participated and thank God I got a, a, I got a position. Uh -huh. I was at least second runner up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. that, that's So it good. motivated me. I yes. was like, mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is interesting. This is interesting. You know, it's fun. You, it's like, fun. you love it and you, you can yes. do it. Yeah. Mm. That's when I got to know I love this. When I went to YMCA, you know YMCA I was doing fashion and design. Mm. Now, that department, every time you finish your course, you are supposed to showcase what you've made. And then this is now a, an institute with thousands of students. Mm. So a friend of mine was like, hey, Becky, why don't you try Miss YMCA? You know, you know, you have something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. why not? <laughs> mm -hmm. He said so. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. That is expensive. Uh -huh. Buy dresses, buy shoes, because I got a little experience from the previous pageant. Okay. Yeah? 
I was like, now that is going to be expensive. You have to maintain a certain lifestyle. People expect you to look this good, good all the of time. Of course, yeah. And then mm. I didn't have any support. But anyway, I still participated. So when I participated, I was crowned Miss YMCA, uh, second runner up again. Mm, mm, mm. I was like, no, this is not my position. You should be at the top. Yes. Yes. I said, you should no. be at the top. I should be at the top. Why not? So, because I don't like to be second. At least I, let me try. Okay, they say shoot for the moon and fall for the stars. Fall for the stars. So okay. And if I shoot the moon, once mm -hmm. I fail, let me get the stars. Mm -hmm. So I was like, no, no, no. Something must be done. I can't be second, second all the time. How about the first ones? I was like, okay. But all through YMC8 was training me. I was meeting with different people. People, people would criticize, mm -hmm. others would encourage. Mm. And whatever happened was mm. building me up in a certain... Uh, okay. Yes. So yes. Mm. The teachers were there to, rather lecturers were there to guide. And then I've been also taking part in many interviews before. before. So, so you are gaining confidence. Confidence. Mm. Mm. And uh, also it trained me to meet people, different walks of lives, people with different questions. Because you ask me, Okay, Miss Wimes, what do you do? What is it all about? Now remember, it's an institute. You're dealing with students. You're not going to tell them, ah, I'm going to be handling politics here. No. <laughs> you have to speak according to the pageant. What are you going to handle in that capacity? Okay. So now, Miss Wimes, it was most about students' affairs. Mm. So I was like, this is not enough. I need something bigger. I remember going for Miss Uganda. Wow. Because it was what I really loved. Which year was that? Ah, I don't recall the year, but I was 17 years. Oh, young, 17. very young, very young. Yes. Mm. So I went, but they told me I'm not of age yet, because at least the required age is 18. And I was 17, so they told me first to go back and hold Grow them, up. Because you don't want to be arrested <laughs> for holding a child yes. in these things. According again. to Ugandan laws. Yeah, so, yes, so uh, mm. then I said, okay, let me first study and finish. Mm -hmm. Once I finished, now I, I got some other visions. I visioned myself representing my, my homeland because I was like, what can I do in Teso region? Mm -hmm. What can I add? What haven't they done? What should I introduce? So I went home to Soroti. I was living with my cousin in Soroti. The journey continued. Uh, by the way, I didn't know Ateso properly. <laughs> wow. You didn't grow up in Teso? No. Okay. Remember, yes. I was in Kampala. Uh -huh. Okay, life was not so bad in Kampala. Uh -huh. So I was mostly in school. Okay. And mm. you know, in school, it's encouraged to speak mm. English. Mm. And I was a uh, student leader. Yeah. So I had to be exemplary, speak English and everything. Mm. Now, coming here, this is a cultural thing, you know. And, and you must know. know some, you know. Yes. Yeah. I don't know the language properly. Mm. Mm -hmm. I pass on for Miss Tourism, mm. Miss Tourism Teso. Yes. Now they expected me to know my language, uh -huh. know the culture. Of course. No stuff, yeah, you know, traditional yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah, the history of your, your, your mm. cultures and yeah. the various Here things. I was in Kampala embracing Buganda stuff. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Eating the matoke, uh -huh. living at the upper side. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I was like, hmm. So I went. I first suggested a very big zero. I was like, eh, so this is the world, huh? I, I, lo I lost, no, to no position, you no nothing. lost totally. It's, totally. Yes. Because I was in a pageant and I was not informed about there it. There are times in life when you're defeated, head on, <sighs> flat, yes. and you have to accept it. So that was one of those experiences. Yes. It happens. It's part it, of life. <laughs> <laughs> Trust you me. Yeah. It hit me so hard. Uh -huh. I was like, how? 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 Really? How? How did this happen? Personal, I fear failure so mm. much, but... I, I have to, you know, talk to myself every time I fail at something, you know. Yeah, mm. so you had to speak to, to yourself and get out and ask questions. Yes. <laughs> Why it happened? So, and do you know what happened later on? Huh? It made me realize East, West, North, South, home, home is, is best. best. You don't leave your culture. Wow. Your Remember, identity. have something about it. Even if you don't, you're not into it so mm, much. Mm, mm, know something about mm, your culture. Mm. Have, a, have something that defines you. Have a belonging. Don't just be there and live in Kampala. You don't mm. know where the Nyako, where the word. Mm -hmm. Know where you come from. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, you have to. You can be a celebrity, mm -hmm. but don't forget your home. So. Your home. Your identity. Not that I chose to, mm. but some parents, you have to understand that you need to train your kids to know their belonging. That's their very powerful. Homage. That's very powerful. 
Mm. Yes, mm. it is. Mm. Because mm. look at how I lost. Mm. Yet I was doing better in Kampala. Mm -hmm. Going home, it is zero. Yet mm. I was supposed to be knowing much about home than Kampala. Wow. Good. But wow. also, I don't blame my parents mm. because their work, studies and everything was there. So we had less time of going to the village. Mm. But even though you don't go to the village often. Well, was it an intermarriage? Mm. Or it was, uh, because usually intermarriages have that challenge. No. Yeah. My parents were oh. both it so it's one from Amoria, okay. one from Kumi. Okay. My mom was from Kumi, my dad from Amoria. Mm. But then we just uh, grew up in Kampala mm. most of the time. The neighborhood, the yeah. children you play with. So you learn the languages which are around you more. Mm. Yeah, but well, well, that's very important which you're noting. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I've got a lot of lessons from all this. Let me take you back to the story. Mm. So, Miss mm. Tourism Tesso beats me hard. I'm like, okay, it's okay. So, Miss Tesso comes around. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, now after I lost, I told myself I must learn everything about my culture, about my heritage, about me, about everything, even the language. Now, in Sorority, people speak Ateso, most people. So, instead of speaking English, I'll speak to them in Ateso. In but it was broken. Okay. I had a vision. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to, to develop again. yourself. Yes. yes. That's a good spirit, mm -hmm. a fighting spirit. I mm -hmm. had to do something because I went there to do something. Mm. So I didn't want to come back empty handed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so. Mm. so you learned the language? I learned the language, mm. but of course it was broken, but I kept on adjusting until I perfected it. Mm. But of course, now I came back to Kampala and back to English and Uganda and the rest. But at least I know something about my, my culture, my heritage, and everything. Mm. So, Mr. Tesla comes on board. And then which year for was that now? Again. Hey. Miss Tesso, which year? Ah, that was 2017. 2017, quite recent. Yeah. Ah, I was around 21. Okay. Yes. That's the age <laughs> <laughs> to explore everything yes. in life. Oh, yeah. Now 21, mm -hmm. I've grown a bit. Mm. So now with Miss Tesso, it also came with its challenges. Look, remember, remember, it is a pageant for the whole region. And now I'm getting these campuses from MOOC getting campuses from all over the universities, they are coming home to compete. Wow. But I say everyone no. is empowered. Yes. Yeah, they, yeah. Are, they are really tall. Mm -hmm. They are so beautiful. Mm -hmm. They are intelligent. Mm -hmm. And look at this family like, okay, so I have to compete with these women, with these girls. How am I going to do this? And they're better than me in most of the things, the mm -hmm. culture and everything. Mm -hmm. But one thing I learned is if you are focused, if you have this attitude in you that I can make it. And if you believe in yourself, you can. You can. Yes. So the first point is you believing in you. Yes. I okay. had to first believe in myself because everything was really hard. Mm -hmm. First of all, I didn't even have sponsorship, buying me stuff, dresses. Literally, all this dream, I had to sponsor my own self. But uh, I'm glad that later on, at a later stage, some of my sisters came in now and when they realized, oh, this girl has something. Okay. <laughs> You know, you have to pass do something for somebody to, to believe. Ah, you get. Yes. So how to start this thing? I'm mm. like, okay, now mm. I'm here. Mm. So when I now talk to these people, they're like, okay, let me get her dress, let me get her shoes, because now they're seeing something. Mm -hmm. So it's what I encourage everybody to do. Start something, then others come and hold your hand. Oh. Yes. You show what you have first. Mm. Okay, and interest others to join, to support you. Yes. Very important. Mm. So the story continues. Mm -hmm. The competition comes. We get representatives from every region. They are speaking fluent Ateso. I'm backstage there listening to people talk. They are clapping for them. And I'm losing the ST. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh God, I Rebecca, can what are you going to say? Uh -huh. In so, the language. In the language. Yes. Eka Kiro, Rimeshon, Ashumitenga, Ani, Anyame Niborolu. Hey, you know that. Okay. There are other things. I could as well give you Max now. It gives you Max. <laughs> you have to know this. Yes. The clans in Tesla. Mm -hmm. Not for me, I was in a Kampala. You know, a Karaboyiti, you know those things. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. I even forgot some mm -hmm. that I had to, to learn for that time. Mm -hmm. But after I was like, ah, this, this is, is too much. much. I'm adjusting. Uh -huh. So it was about that. But uh, what helped me so much was I was confident. I'm a go-getter. I mm. don't like stepping down. Absolutely. Mm. Yes. I don't like stepping down. Mm. Mm. I'd mm. rather die mm -hmm. trying. Trying, but not to fail to yes. try. Wow. That's a fighting spirit. Yes. It's a spirit of overcomers. Mm. Yeah. And then with the experience I had in Kampala, the confidence, the criticism, 
you know, even criticism can push you to be someone. To challenge. Yeah. Actually, you challenge yourself more. <laughs> I People will be like, ah, she's too dark. Uh -huh. She can't be Miss YMCA. Why is she going? You know? Uh -huh. And then I had pimples. Mm. These, these are real life things. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I was 18, 19. And you know that, that, that industry is so, so challenging. It's so, you know, the critique is too much mm. sometimes. If you can't hold it, you, you, you just yes. walk away. <laughs> But okay. everything they say mm. they did to me, mm. it made me stronger and better and more confident that even right now you cannot say anything that will put me down. Because I know, yeah, there are, there are situations I got down, uh, like I feel low, but it is hard mm. because now I'm used to that stuff and then I know how to come out of it. But sometimes I, I feel low. Of course it happens, which is normal, you know, which is normal for everyone. Yes. yes. So... The contest has come. The contest has You're come on now. stage. On stage. Mm. Now for me, the advantage I had, I had this creativity in fashion. So my creative way was, was the best. Excellent. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My creative way. You know, these are, these are the things that uh, give marks. Creative way, the costume itself and the evening dress okay. and stuff like that. Yes, yes. Plus mm. the experience I have. Yes, I had a challenge in the language and all that. Mm. But I performed, I really performed the traditional stuff and then boom, I was crowned the winner. Is that so? Yes. I was thinking you're going to say you were third runner up or something. From second run up to Miss Tess. Wow. For the first time I felt that was victorious. Progress. <laughs> <laughs> I Congrats. felt like the world is mine. I know. Ah. The feeling of victory. Mm. Yeah. You know, being Every patient. time you have victory, you know, you, oh. you, you feel like you're a gladiator. Yeah. Uh -huh. I felt so good. Oh. I felt so motivated. I was like, yeah, this mm. is the deal. Mm -hmm. Another person next, I'm mm. going to motivate that one too. Wow. It didn't stop there. So what did you use uh, do with that title? The, the, uh, the title. The, the, yeah. You no, won Miss Tesso. Mm -hmm. You were reigning Miss Tesso for one year or so. And then. Okay, now yeah. Miss Tesso, I was Miss Tesso for one year, but then I worked so hard and I was kind of extended another serve, another year to serve. Oh, yes. I don't know, maybe sometimes, you know, if things, funds run out, mm -hmm. and maybe they discuss mm. and they're not able to hold another one mm. the next time mm. quick. So mm. I was told to be Miss Tesso for two years, mm. which I did. But in the service of Miss Tesso, um, I covered. About three schools or four. Okay. Uh, but I, I partnered up with ETOP, newspaper mm. and radio mm -hmm. in Teso region. Mm. And then we did some pad training. We trained students how to make reusable pads. But then not only students came, we also told them to bring parents on board. Mm. And if you can see those photos that you I'll show you, men were even making pads better than women. Ooh. <laughs> Yes, and you're like, I have to do this pass because I'm tired of spending money. Let me learn the things I teach my other daughters. Ah. So it was really something for me. And I, I felt like, yeah, I've done something. But In my was, one year or two years. Mm, yeah. Mm. It was not big enough for me. I felt like there's still something lacking. Of course, the whole fashion industry, really, or, you know, the beauty queens who are crowned. Ideally, we expect you to use those positions, those titles for, you know, changing society. It's not just yes. to feel good about it and all that. Mm. So that impact is critical. And mm. uh, we are glad you did something. Yes, uh, I did in, something yeah. with a small capacity I that had. You had. Uh, mm. At 21, you know, of I'm course. still a child. Mm. I'm not exposed to so many mm -hmm. things, but mm -hmm. it was what I could do in that age bracket. Okay. Yeah, but uh, not only that, we also did some cleaning of the main mm -hmm. hospital mm -hmm. uh, and other small hosp smaller hospitals or dispensaries mm -hmm. who also clean the main market. Mm -hmm. And then I participated in tree planting. So I did some activities, which I'll show you. Wonderful. In the photos. Yeah. And then from there, I went in for another title now, another competition called Miss Ateke. Miss Ateke. Now this is the root of it all. Ah, now that's prepared exciting for culture as well. Things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Mistress? I participated greatly in that one and I still do. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Now, Miss Tessa was just a, like a warm-up. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. But now Ateke is something really traditional. And it brings together quite a number of yes. tribes. Yeah, I think uh, the, 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 the Nyangatons. Uh -huh. yes. Nyangatons. Yeah. Uh, those ones in Kenya, I forgot. Turukana. 
Tana, yes. Yes. I think you have information about it. I do, I do. It's exciting for me as well. Mm. Yeah. We have the Toposa in South Sudan. We have the Turkana in Kenya. Yes. The Nyangatom in uh, Ethiopia. Mm. The Iteso here. Yes. And then the Iteso in Kenya as well. Have yes. I left out any other? And surprising, all those tribes. Mm. Mm. Is it? Mm. Are they tribes? Yes. Mm. Mm. All those tribes participated in this article. Now we're looking here, we're looking for one queen mm. that will unite all the clans, the clans, the tribes, the nation together. Yeah, that's one nation actually. Atheke is one nation, mm. ideally one tribe, but scattered in different countries. Yes. That's one people, one people. according to God's creation. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, it was so interesting now this one because wow. uh, it was harder uh -huh. and interesting. Okay. So now we have every delegate coming from a country. First, it was also like a original search yes but then i was mistaken at the time mm. and then again i was participating in this one mm. so they were like one person cannot have two crowns okay yeah but at least i was given a first run up position in misa take care as in well take care. Wow. because i couldn't hold two crowns those are two offices you are a queen in everything <laughs> <laughs> maybe you don't go empty-handed you come at least third and you know mm. runner-ups and you know yeah, yeah that's good so. mm -hmm. yeah, that is what happened mm. so after we finished with the regional search here in the Teso region, mm. we had to travel now. We went to Moroto Hotel. Okay. Now from Moroto Hotel is when now, I don't know why they chose Moroto. I think it's a, a significant place. We actually left out to uh, Karmojong under the, the Atekir nation because mm. I mentioned all the other tribes and Karmojong is missing. Karmojong, Iteso, mm. Nyangatom, yes. Turukana, and the toposa, yes, that's the, the right record. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I was asking myself, but that is a good explanation. Yeah. So every delegate had to come in and we stayed in that hotel. We did a boat camp and everything. Mm. The competition was, was so fierce. Absolutely. Very fierce. Mm. It is so it looks like we don't have a strong culture. It's a bit, yeah, it's an issue. It's an issue. Our, is, our it, culture is not strong. It was scattered because of the <laughs> conflict. You know, people migrated to Busoga, Buganda, mm. and many other things. So, yes. yeah, we have to redeem ourselves. We have to. <laughs> because really, yeah. I looked at the, the other cultures, I'm like, this is nowhere here. Wow. Because for us, we're like, we're just sweeping on what on the floor. Uh -huh. And other hands are bringing the whole dust. Yet. You know? Now, Toposa is a rich culture. Very rich. The Maasai, rather from the Turkana. Kenya, Turkana. Mm. It's also a rich culture. Just look at the dress and be like, okay, now these beads, oh. these things. Ah. There's a way they, that paint they put on their skin, you the, the Turkanians. Uh -huh. And I looked at it, I'm like, so for us, we only tie what? And it's done. And it's done. We tie a soup. Uh -huh. And then maybe a, a necklace. And the necklace, and yeah, done. Then, yeah. But you look at the other person, mm -hmm. even, I'll be like, now she has, she has beads. She has this, she has painted the face, she has this, like everything this is, is in rich. order. Yeah. And then they are warriors. A true African beauty. Yes. Uh -huh. These are warrior tribes. Wow. Talk of the toposa, they speak with energy. Mm. Get mm. confidence. Oh. <laughs> I was like, how will I? And they are really tall people. Yes. Very tall. And very beautiful. You've seen a Sudanese toposa? Yes. Very wow. tall. Mm, mm. She looks like a giant on stage and she conquers the whole stage. I know, dominate. I felt demoralized. <laughs> You felt draft. Mm. Uh huh. I was like, no, this one is a problem. Here. It is. I mm. need to go and practice mm. and understand my culture. Mm. Maybe there's something I'm missing mm. on me, mm. you know? Because mm. other people know their culture. Mm. I think they crop from childhood knowing how to, to dance, mm -hmm. how to do everything, mm. and they know how to dress up and they really speak. I tried to speak, but the other ones really, you know, because their culture looked rich. Wow. And now here, this is at a care mm. call competition. Wow. Looking at who can represent all the attackers in together. Mm, mm, so mm. if yours is a bit like this, they look for the other that is bringing out everything. the real meaning of the the, the attacker. Yeah, the culture. Culture, the culture is identity, yeah. really. Yeah. yeah. So, so you came second runner up I from lost. that competition. I lost. You lost totally. No, I got first runner up uh -huh. in the region test. Oh, in Teso. Now the other not international something. Oh, it's regional now. Yeah. Bringing together it was five regional countries. countries. Yes. Then from regional, mm. you compete with the other countries. Mm -hmm. Becomes international mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Because I'm looking for one representative. Represent all of us. Wow. And South Sudan took it. Took it. She supposed to took it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So she took it and it was a lesson learned. Mm -hmm. 
like I said, we have to equip our children mm. with culture. Mm. Much as we go abroad, mm -hmm. let's not forget our origin mm. because at one point mm. it will come wanting. It will come hunting mm. you and, you know, wanting, yes. as you've said. Yes. That's wonderful. And so, do we still have those Ateke competitions going on? Um, or is that a one off? I don't know much, but I think it is still there. What, what, what the last part, the, the last time I left it, we had formed the Ateke Care Group. I think. Mm. Uh, Mm. We have WhatsApp pages for that, mm -hmm. groups and all that. But they're kind of reviving it again. You know, we've been in lockdown for mm. two years. Mm. Mm. It mm. affected everything. It affected everything, every sector. Yes. Okay, so we're moving on from Atekel competition. So mm. what was the next conquer you made? Uh, the next one. The next one was Miss International Uganda. Okay. <laughs> Which is the the one you, you mm, are this now... Is, this, is this is different. different. Uh -huh. I first went for Miss International Uganda. Mm. Uh, you know, this is a Ugandan thing, and at that level, things were a bit different again. It was during lockdown, so there was a lot of inconveniences along the way. Mm. And then, uh, you know how it is in Uganda. Mm. Sometimes things are not well put, you know. Ah, I don't know what happened, so I never communicated to me what next. Mm. So I left it at that. You left it at that. Yeah, because when, even in hardship, the very first lockdown, it was so too it was hard so for hard. everyone. Very hard. Mm. Okay. So from there, before I knew it, somebody was going through my Facebook page, uh -huh. looking at my stuff, yes. what I was posting, mm -hmm. and then a, mes a message pops, pop, pop. Uh -huh. Hello, Rebecca. Yeah. How are you? Good afternoon. Mm. We have this pageant. Would you like to be a part of it? I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what is that pageant now? Wow. So the importance of projecting our work, mm. you know. Yeah, social media comes in handy here. Yes. Okay. Mm. But now this one, I was just nominated to represent. Uh -huh. Like mm. I said, they first go through my page uh -huh. and they see, am I capable? Do I have the qualities they want? Uh -huh. Then they they chose me. Okay. But there was a lot of chaos a bit with me, with mm. them. Mm. Mm. I mm. told them, okay, this is a nice platform, but please, you get supermodels in Uganda. <laughs> You didn't consider yourself a supermodel? No, because it was expensive. Ooh. Registration alone was almost a million. Ah. And I was like, ah, I, I can't afford a money. million for yeah. that. Mm. If it, registration is a million, what about the other things? It's an international pageant. You're required to travel to Mexico for an international what? Finale crowning and all that. Okay. So I'm looking at all the expenses. That's how I was like, hmm? There are, there are supermodels in Uganda mm. who can afford this. Mm. Yes, I love to do this, mm. but I know my ability right now. So, But you know what? They insisted. They were like, no, we don't care. We came to you because we want to raise you from ah, grass to grass. Wow. That was what was going through my mind. I was like, well, I think mm. it was about growth, you know, because others could have really already made it and, you know, visible models, known and international. Mm. And they needed to a brand that they can work with yes mm. and then this is it was my prayer actually because i was like god really i really want this cannot this just get one international competition i can be in just one if i try and i fail it is okay i know that at least i tried but give me a platform mm. then i left it at that okay one year passed then this came in and it why I prayed that prayer was because this kid, these girls challenged me. Mm. Let me give you a little bit of it. When mm. I was training them how to make birds, you know, these are, these are children that come from less advantaged families. families. Mm. Yeah, so we were like, even me, I want to be like you. But uh, for me, I'm staying here in the village. How can I also become a queen? And how did you make it? But for me, I knew how I did my things. You know, for me, I kept on. You know, I fight battles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. I conquer, what fails, what I can, I get like that. That's mm. how I've reached to be where mm. I am today. Mm. I told them, mm. you know what? Let me go and, and do something. I'll come back and give you a reply. So I haven't gone back yet because I'm still uh, putting things together. Mm. Mm. I mm. want to go back and tell them I'm back. And, and I see, have something. I have something for you. Wow. wow. Mm. I want you to learn from me. Uh, you don't have to be from a, a rich family. You don't have to have all the parents. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have parents to achieve your dream. Yes. Ah, yeah, things happen, you lose your parents. And maybe you don't have people that are really interested Pushing in you and supporting you. You start what you can. Somebody will notice Somebody you. will notice. 
Wow. I was noticed on Facebook, imagine, wow. Wow. given this platform. That's an important lesson for mm. somebody out there. Mm. So start something, mm. however small it is, however mm. hard it is, mm. just start it and play around it. Yes. Do Keep something. going. Show it. One day at a time. People, just mm. like my training school, mm. I jokingly posted, hey, I'm training students. Before I knew it, from Facebook, I get three students from social media, Facebook. I'm like, hey, let me train. I want my have a daughter here. Train her. I have this. And it's cool. Mm -hmm. It depends on how you, you present yourself. Mm -hmm. You present your work. You do your things. Yes. I would like to capture a little more about your impact using that those titles, the spaces you are in. But I would like us to know more about this Miss International before we go to that okay. point. Yes, how is it? Where is it? You know, how can other people, you know, take advantage? And then we see how you are working around with it, impacting society. Mm. Yeah. Okay, mm. now Miss Top Model International is a, a, a very new pageant in Uganda. Mm. And I'm the first one to participate in it. Wow. But it is going to keep running since I'm now the national director as well. Okay. Now, Miss Top Model International is more of a, a platform given to young women mm. 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 to do more for society. Mm -hmm. It's not going to limit you that you should do only tourism bit of it mm. or you do only culture culture like it cuts Uganda, across you know mm. it is it, okay it cuts across mm. you can do you can do something about tourism you can do something about uh, eh, culture you mm. can do anything about it because it's top model mm. it's not limiting you to miss tourism mm. so if you're miss tourism sometimes it's limiting you to do tourism things okay. because that is what your title is all about all right this one is a, an open platform you do everything mm. it cuts across mm. i can go and work with tourism Work with wildlife, work with the beauty, know, yes, issues, fashion, anything. Yeah, fashion. Mm -hmm. As long as it's benefiting society. Uh -huh. Wow. So me participating in this, I I looked at that fact and I'm like, yeah, this won't limit me, and because uh, I want to do many things, and then um, being Mr. Model International as well, because mm. I was first Mr. Model Uganda, and I was also trying to do some activities as Mr. Model Uganda. But then I was trying to organize a charity drive in Lago Hospital. Ah, yes. Yeah. Then on the fateful on the fateful day, the same day I was supposed to carry out the event, we had a bomb blast. Wow. If you remember that scenario. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's from around there somewhere. So the hospital was overwhelmed with, with uh, victims of vaccine, you know, uh, bombing and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it kinda brought me down again, yet I'd put in a lot of effort. A lot of effort. Yeah, so it was my activity that I had planned as Miss Top Model before mm. because I was waiting for another grand finale. Oh, so. Yeah, so, so you are now Miss Top Model International and we want to see how that title, that position, that, you know, leadership space you're holding can impact society in terms of changing it, but also inspire other young people. We have yeah. young people in our households and uh, you know they have the desire to do something in that industry. You want to be an artist, you want to be a musician, you want to be a designer, you know, all those things <laughs> are gifts, they are talents. Yeah, yeah you need to, to speak to somebody out there. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Actually, when I was a child, mm. I used to love singing. Mm -hmm. I used to love singing, but it's not like something that I, I want to do. Because now I have discovered my strength, mm. I've discovered who I am. Yes. You know, the age of 21 to 28, that is a time for you to discover yourself. Ah. So when you watch that, is you know who you are. You know who you are. So you consolidate on your career. Yes. Okay. So yes. every dream is expensive. Mm. I will say that. Mm. Be it music, you need to spend money on the videos, audios, outfits, pay for venues. It is also expensive. Mm. Mm. I, I think everything requires money, but she don't discourage you yeah like i said when you start something small and mm. somebody notices you mm -hmm. a helping hand will come out yeah. and pull you and raise you and work with you mm. throughout the journey mm. Mm. so uh, work now around miss international top the model international. Yeah, what i'm doing yes you're doing what you're yeah what because I'll be, I, I was to do. looking at your profile you're doing some small community interventions in the mm -hmm. area you are in you are training other people yeah, we need to capture that. Oh, yes. Mm. Now, as Miss Top Model International, I'm cooking up something because uh, I was crowned in April mm. and I was trying to first look for what to do, put things together. Mm. 
Now, um, I would love to do charity drives again. Mm. Come and give to people. Mm -hmm. Buy stuff, pads, food, items, and donate. Mm. Mm. But till when shall we keep donating stuff to people? Mm -hmm. Because today you come and give me posho, it will get finished. Tomorrow. I might not even remember that you gave me the posho. Yeah. But of course, I'll be grateful for that time because I ate it and stuff. But I was looking at this. How about we as a society? Hmm? How about we come up with something sustainable? Mm. Like um, equipping somebody with a skill mm -hmm. so that person doesn't have to wait for you to bring for them stuff again. Yeah. Mm. So this person is able to work and buy and sustain the family. Yes. So I sat down and pondered harder and I thought about it and I really want to do this with all my heart. Mm, mm, and mm. the reason as to why I'm here today is because of this. It has been ringing in my head. I'm like, where do I start from? Mm, mm, How mm. do I go about this? Mm, mm. I have the skill. Mm -hmm. I have the love. Mm. I have the passion. Mm. I have the compassion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. how do I start this? Mm. Because I really want to skill these people. I've seen women around my workplace. One time I was walking with a bottle of water. I was thirsty. I was walking and the sun was really hot. Out of nowhere, the kids ran to me and they're all begging, please, water, water. water and water, the thing water. was just half of it. So you had to give it out. I, I, it was the last drop I had. Mm. And that day I was broke. <laughs> <laughs> I was broke. It was the last spot I had and I had spent all the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I was about to drink it, the kids come. I felt so bad. I'm like, really? They're taking my leftover water? And they don't mind. They're like, please, we are thirsty. Mm. I gave them the bottle, but mm -hmm. it hit me so hard. I was mm. like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. These are kids. They were just about five, six, seven. They are loitering around Kansanga Road. I know, mm. you know, people that have worked there. Mm. These kids even literally follow you and even get embarrassed. Oh. They're like, mm. I don't have, but they still walk and mm. follow you. Mm. Mm. I was like, really? This is not the Uganda we want. Something has to be done. I don't know what. So, in my heart, I was like, what can we give these people that can help them get out of poverty? Because you're not going to tell them to go back to the village and you they know, will those go. are questions leaders ask themselves all the time. So you are leading in, in your sector, finding solutions. So, I have a solution. <laughs> to challenges <laughs> that exist in society. I am ready to work, uh -huh. seriously. Yeah. I am. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I would love to meet maybe the vice president of the speaker, mm -hmm. I don't know, someone to mm -hmm. talk to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you can maybe just connect me to some organization, mm -hmm. I'm ready to train these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have the skill, I have the in love designing, I want. In, in designing, in fashion, fashion in design. modeling. Yes, in modeling and other things, things yeah. because there are other things um, inclusive. And then not only should I do this, I think every beauty queen, not just beauty queens, everybody, mm. let us help each other. You yeah. know? If you can make something, how about to share that skill with these people so that they get off the, they get off the streets mm. and also find mm. where to live? Mm. Mm. For crying out loud, life is hard. Earth is hard. Mm -hmm. So it is now that we have to come up and try to, to help put other each people. other's hands. Okay. Me, yeah. I am ready to do this, but my problem is I don't have the machinery. I can see you're a beautiful queen with a beautiful heart as well that desires to reach out to other people, to help other people. And that's what your titles are all about, I believe. After you have got this space, after you've got that position of leadership, what do you use with it? How do you use it to change society? And so we, we, we needed to capture that and see, you know, support the creative industry because we want to see how many more women. would like you to bring more women that are doing different things in the creative industry. And we showcase this and also encourage other people to, to yes. know, you know, that there is life wherever you are, in whichever sector God has placed you in. As women, we shouldn't fear the creative industry. We shouldn't mm. fear these, you know, spaces that sometimes men dominate. Mm. And, you know, we can do a lot. So that mm. is why we, we are here. This space is generally about that. And also today to touch into your sector to see how we can get more women in that sector. So if you talk about training and supporting other women, I would love to see that happening. I would love to see you get more support mm -hmm. so you can encourage other young people, young women to do more. So there is this question also that sometimes uh, parents struggle with in terms of the creative industry. You know, people don't have faith that somebody can make it big 
in that sector. That's why you see when you started telling us about your story, the assumption was that study first, get a degree first, yes. excel in academics mm. before you can do any other thing. Mm. What, what is your thought around that area? Can somebody really make it big and, you know, be a useful in society in this sector that you are in? Mm. Yeah. I'd like okay. you to speak to now, that a little. Mm. Before education came, mm. before the white man brought education to Africa, wherever, across the world, there was one person who gave us some unique knowledge, who is God. He imparted this talent in us, mm. you know, these skills, these, these valuable things, you know, that, you know, even if you study hard, education cannot give you. Mm. Yes, education is necessary because I went to school personally, I have studied, I'm able to do all these things because I went to school. But I also have skills in me, talents in me that education could not give you, me. Yeah. You get. Mm. This is something naturally put. So for parents that have children, that have skills, that have passion for some things, I don't think it is right for you to stop them from doing these skills and favor education. Mm, mm, I have seen people with papers, degrees, they are still looking for jobs. Me, I went to an institute. I am employing some You're people, employing I'm trained people. people. You are looking. Yeah. I haven't gone to university yet mm, because mm, mm. Uh, I'm still looking Is it even necessary, you know? Or is it necessary to develop yourself in the skill that you have? Yeah. Learn right now, more. I would have mm. gone, but I'm like, that is being selfish to me, mm -hmm. not to anybody. Mm. To me, I, okay, my parents gave me a good foundation. I went to better schools. That's what molded me even more. But then at this juncture, yes, I, I don't have to teach them because of reasons. I have to do it for my, for my own self. Mm. It's a bit hard. So right now I'm like, how about these people here that are just crying, the, 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 the children of tomorrow, how about we start uh, lifting those ones, you know, because uh, with the man I had, I would decide, why, should, why do I need all this stuff to mm, be done? Mm, mm. Let me go to university and finish. I'll finish university, that's for sure. I'll if finish. need be, yeah. Yes. Mm. But right now, how about, right now, what I really want to do is to give up a foundation to some, mm. some children, mm. some mm. women. Mm. Mm. And I'm okay doing it because you life do is have hard. This skill. Life is really hard. Yeah. So I feel I am... I have to do something about For the situation. Them. Yeah, yeah. I really feel it because every time I'm sleeping, I'm seated. That is the reason why I contacted you. Because ah. I felt, I was feeling guilty. I'm like, these kids taking my water like this. You're passing, they're looking at it. I feel I can do something. And my heart tells me I'm able to do it. So wow. I feel like I'll be selfish to ignore them mm. and then think of my own interests. Okay. Yet I can, mm. at an university, I can go anytime. You can, you can. There's a lot to do. Lot Besides, to the university degree does not assure you of a livelihood. And also, <coughs> it's not necessarily that after doing your degree, then you are more useful to society. Yes. yes. What is important is the skill of the life. Skill. The skill of life and what it can do to society. Mm. Knowledge is important. Learning is continuous. Yes. Yeah, so I'd like to uh, thank you so much for sharing that life of yours. But just before we finish, I just wanted to capture more of this. What are your hopes? What are your aspirations with the Miss Top you know, Model International? Mm -hmm. What do you intend to do with it in Uganda? Okay, right mm -hmm. about now, like I've been talking here, yeah? <clears throat> I intend to train really these people. Mm -hmm. The needy, mm. needy people in mm. society, especially mm. child mothers, mm -hmm. not even child mothers, even boys, even young adults mm -hmm. who are men. Mm. I mean, mm. we shouldn't only think of the female gender because the most vulnerable. Earth is hard for everybody. So mm. I feel we can, we can train, especially if I'm able to connect. Mm. I'm able to connect with maybe organizations that are willing to come in or already doing this and I just be a part of it. I'm ready to give my service. That's what I really want to do as Miss of Model International. It's my intention. Mm. I remember mm. when I was contesting for Miss Teso, I told the judges, they asked me, what will you do if you're crowned Miss Teso today? I told them, I'll, I'll help fight and eradicate poverty. Mm. That's I a said big it out goal. of the blue. That's a big one. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it has been haunting me up to today. Yeah. Sometimes we say things and we think it ends there. Mm. But it comes back to you be like, you said this, what mm. have you done? So every time I'm there, I'm like, I promise people this, what have I done? Mm -hmm. Not because I'm doing it because I said, but it's because I said it with an intention. Mm -hmm. And right about now is the time for me to act. Okay. 
mm. and what I said. Mm. So mm. really, we can. I believe we can fight poverty if we all try to give, skills. do something. Yeah, you know, mm. a little bit of it. You don't have to give it all. Just something small. Train like about five people would have created a difference. Mm. You can train ten people in soap making. Train ten people in cake baking. Uh -huh. Something. Uh -huh. Do it out of love, and okay. then you'll see that we shall live in a better Uganda because. Today it is me who is down. Tomorrow you need me. Wow. And stuff like that. Wow. So that's what I believe and I'm, I really want to do and I'm going to do it. And that's it's, your vision. That's my vision. Yes, that's yes. your vision for tomorrow, for the future. I think you are a lovely queen. Beautiful, mm. at, you know, mm. uh, uh, on the outside but also on the inside. Because we see a lot of things that you desire to do for society. To change lives, to transform mm. lives. And, you know... There are many people who have so much, but they don't want to do anything for anybody. So I, I think that is the special thing mm. and gift that you have. Yes. And your space that you hold, these particular spaces can help you do that. So I'd like to thank you so much for, for giving us that. I would like you just to speak to a young woman out there who is uh, thinking, uh, how do I start? Where do I begin? What is this whole thing? But they have that desire as you had. And uh, yes, I would desire really to, 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 to bring more people in the creative industry and have a chat and inspire young people, yes. young women. Because you see, in Uganda here, we have a lot of opportunity in terms of uh, developing Uganda, but also having people make it big through the creative industry, but little attention has been paid to it. And also maybe parents don't understand the power behind the, you know, the artistic, the creative industry, you know, being a musician, being yes. a designer, being, a, you know, all these things that are in the creative, they are part of the mind, the gift that you have, God has given you in your mind and in your hands. Mm -hmm. So just speak to, to us a little bit of that area, inspire any other young woman. Okay. Yeah. Dear beautiful soul, mm. I don't know who you are, but I want to tell you something today and please, if you can, try your best to do it. Listen to your inside, listen to your instincts, listen to your heart. Society will always say things, people will say things, but stick to what you love, stick to your dream, but also study, okay? Don't mm. leave education for mm. this. Mm. You try to balance the two. One thing I'm going to promise you is this, when you start something, someone will surely notice you. It doesn't matter how long it will take, just keep doing it. Wow. When I was in secondary school, I was doing this stuff. I didn't know that I would reach here. Today I'm Mr. Model International. Tomorrow I'll be something else. Keep fighting. Do not let criticism kill your, <laughs> kill your drive. Your drive and mm -hmm. your dream. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then also one more thing. For those that have made it in life, or for those that have have, some, have achieved something in life, try to also hold Another. somebody. Mm. Let us fix each other's crown. Wow. Somebody fixed my crown, gave me this opportunity. I haven't said the whole story about Mr. Bodo. Maybe when I get another opportunity, I'll talk about the whole story. But some, because of time, yes, because of time, I'm able to only say this. Somebody fixed my crown. Somebody pulled me, believed in me. Today I am here, and I also want to pull somebody's hand. I want to fix somebody's crown. As Miss Top Model, the Top Model International Director, Uganda, mm. very soon I'll begin asking for people to come and contest for wow. Miss Top Model Uganda and mm. represent us internationally. Mm. Mm. So I'll be sharing that on the social media, and maybe I'll talk about it also on other interviews and shows and stuff like that. Wow. This is a platform for you to change your life. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. To not just get this mm -hmm. and stick to being beautiful, mm -hmm. go to your salon, make mm -hmm. your nails. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. You this do something about... to change society with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, be beautiful. But you see, after the crowning and everything, they will ask you, what have you done? With it? What are you doing? Even God will ask you about yes. it. What did you do with the talent that I what gave you? What are you doing? Yeah. Because this is a platform for us to change lives. Mm -hmm. If you ever get a title, a crown, whichever field, not just this, whatever promotion you get, change somebody's life. Wow. Earth is hard. I keep saying this. Earth is hard. Not just Uganda. The whole earth is hard. Let us try to lift each other. Mm -hmm. Let's not destroy one another mm -hmm. because we need each other. Today I'm here sitting tomorrow. My shoe will break. 
and maybe you're driving, you could drop me somewhere. Why? Mm. Because mm. Mm. maybe I also pushed you to get that car. Wow. Mm. Wow. Seriously. That's what ah. I have to say. Fix each other's crowns. I think I could do more of you, uh, Miss <laughs> Rebecca. I know that you have a beautiful soul. I can feel it and I can I reach out to it. I, I, I see myself in you because I see you have a beautiful, beautiful heart. It's it's beauty with the brains, but beauty with a purpose, thank with you. a purpose also to change society yes, and yes, life. Yes. And uh, I would like to thank you so much for coming over, for having us here with you, just for a brief conversation about what you're doing and also trying to inspire someone out there that it's possible to make it big in life, in any sector of society, in any yes. sector. And our purpose here is to see how our, our women, women in Uganda, wherever, doing, you know, in various sectors. So maybe conclusively, uh, just to, to maybe pick your mind last loan, you know, how you see the industry in terms of the creative industry and how it is doing with the women quickly, just a quick one before we go. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel women are utilizing that space sufficiently enough yes. beyond the fashion in other, you know, sectors um, within the creative industry? All sectors. In the creative industry. In the creative industry. Mm. Ha, I'm really impressed. <laughs> With the women. I'm, I'm really impressed, actually, when yeah. you, in that uh, question you, you've asked me. Mm. Seriously, I'm seeing women coming up, mm. you know, with businesses, innovative ideas. I've seen this program where women are making crafts out of so much things you don't even expect. Mm. 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 You know, fashion is broad. Mm -hmm. We have fashion for clothing. Mm. We have creative arts, mm. we have uh, crafts, mm -hmm. we have that. So. Yeah. But gone are the days, gone are the days when women just sit at home. Today women are innovative. They have done stuff around mm. and I'm happy for that. But how about we, we that have gotten something, can we also try to lift those ones who are down mm. so that mm. Mm. we mm. live like almost a balanced life? Because it's not good for us to eat bread and somebody's eating one pancake for two days or Doesn't one day. Feel right. oh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody's begging, you're driving a Porsche car and passing. How about you ask this person, why are you here? Wow. What is wrong? Wow. Who knows, maybe just a hundred K that you're going to spend on alcohol. Okay. Mm. That you're going to spend on alcohol, that a hundred K can change this man's life. Wow. Can get a few materials and start something. Okay. And before you know it, because she knows the hardships she has gone through. Yeah. She's going to utilize that money and make sure it reproduces more. And then you'll not see her on the streets again. Okay. How about we do something like that? Wow. Stop wasting money on useless things. Mm. Sorry to mm. say this, but mm. too much Making of alcohol society is not better. good. Mm. How about, okay, drink small, less, less of it. Mm. And use that money to change another life. Wow. Wow. Because can... remember, yes. so let mm. me finish this a bit. Mm. Remember today, this, this girl, maybe you're sitting, you're seeing on the streets, could be your son's wife in future. <laughs> Things change. Yes. We don't know what God's plans are. Uh, so how about you change this person a bit? By the time your son meets her, life is a is better okay. person. That wow. is how things that is how things operate. Wow. Wow. I, I could talk to you on and on because I feel there is something special in you that has to be picked out, that has to be brought out. Of course, your heart is very beautiful. I can see that. And you desire mm -hmm. to see society change in many ways. I pray that God will connect you more to different opportunities mm -hmm. to do more work across board. And uh, I just want to, to, to end here because we have got to go. But to thank you so much for coming, Miss uh, uh, Queen, uh, mm -hmm. the reigning queen, uh, Miss mm -hmm. Top Model International. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to kickstart to help us understand what is happening in the creative industry. I know we'll get more people to come and share their stories, how they are impacting society, and also how they can inspire others in that same industry that you're in. Yes. I've been really enriched and uh, very excited to have listened to you and uh, wishing you well. But I know I will bring you back here on another thing, yes. but in the same, you know, uh, conversation. So thank you so much for coming. Even to you, our viewer, thank you for being with us up to this point. We have been here with Miss Rebecca Akoel and myself, Monica Modin, today tapping into the creative industry and hoping that we can do more in terms of bringing on board more women, but also largely to inspire other young women, women in those sectors uh, that we want to, to spread across to impact and uh, use the space for changing society.
Till the next episode, thank you so much. Shalom. Thank you.